SyncThing is an open source software that can be used for many different sync operations, but the majority use it for sync to sync a server or to sync a workstation over the VPN for data backup or the transition to a new server or a new workstation. This video will assume that you have the VPN connection already set up on the system or is on the same network as the current computer that you're syncing with. What we're gonna do now is show you the process of how to start up the sync thing with on the current server and then you're gonna also show how to do it on the one that's the old server. So the new server and the old server should also be running the same software and I'll show you the entire process. Okay, we're on the desktop, so I'm gonna show you guys how to set up sync thing on the two machines, one on basically the current system and one on the actual server gonna be syncing from. Right now in front of me, I have this computer that's basically the new server that's gonna go in place, not actually in the client's office. I'm gonna VPN over into the client's office so that we have an encryption, a secure encryption between the two networks. This is the way I usually do things with sync thing is so that they kind of like see themselves as both on the same network as well as you're using the encryption from OpenVPN to allow you to have a secure and private connection between the two machines. SyncThing does offer encryption going over the network or over the internet. You have to open up ports for that to work. I prefer not to go into that right now because opening up ports also is a security liability to some degree. And I'd like to go over that in another video with OpenVPN and show you guys how to use that with OpenVPN instead of using, you know, just opening up random ports. So this will look like as if I put this machine directly in my client's office. That's basically what the VPN is going to do. Start with what you're going to need is you're going to need syncthing.net. You're going to need to download this. You're going to download the Windows edition, since that's what I'm doing. This version obviously is supported through a bunch of different ways. We're gonna do Windows, a Windows to Windows system. So I'm gonna do download Windows. Once it's done, it will open up in downloads. This is just basically an, a zip file. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna extract that zip file into its own folder. Of course, it's named the same thing, but you can get rid of the zip file at this point so there's less confusion, and now we just get the folder. Inside the folder, there's another folder. So when we set up sync thing, we're gonna set up some basic authentication so that when we go from one system to the other system, you'll be able to see that with some simple keying, you can basically authenticate each other, approve that sync operation, and tell it where to sync those folders to. One small word of advice before we start, this will make subfolder, I think it's called .sh or something like that, or some kind of weird hidden folder within all the paths. You don't, you wanna tell your client not to delete those folders because that's the actual sync information between the two machines. It's all the file operations as well as all the file information. If you delete that file either on the workstation or on the server, the actual server that you're copying from, you will have a problem where it will not be able to resync that information. It'll have to start over and then resync everything again from the from start to finish. This sync operation that I'm going to go over today is a one-way sync. I'm not doing a two-way sync because we are actually replacing this computer with the one that's actually in the office. Let's get to it and let's start syncing. Let's open up sync thing as an administrator. It's going to tell you your windows, you know, it's not going to be signed. So just run it anyway. It's fine. Run it. You're going to have to allow it to access the network. So you can say yes to that. It will come up with allowing anonymous usage data. This is gonna open up your browser. It's gonna go right to the sync thing URL. If you notice at the top, it's the URL of the machine, which is 127.0.0.1 colon 8384. This is okay, just leave it, leave it default. Let's not go crazy with this for now. The encrypted usage data report is sent daily. You, you can send the anonymous data, anonymous data if you want. I'm gonna say no, just so that we don't waste bandwidth at the current time. Username and password has been set for the GUI. Please consider setting it up if you want to prevent other users on this computer from accessing syncing through other files. You should do this. So click on settings and you want to go to GUI and you want GUI authenticated user to be whatever user you want to set up. In my case, I'm just going to put my name and we're just going to choose some sort of random password from our random password generator. Seems good. This is a very temporary setup. We're gonna remove sync thing once we're done. So this password's not gonna mean much, but we'll block it out probably anyway. You could use HTTPS for GUI. If you turn this 
if you turn HTTPS for GUI on, it's going to probably come up with a certificate error. You'll have to continue past it if you want to use that. So let's just hit this for now. Uh, never for the password, and we're just going to log in. Obviously, write down your username and password somewhere. I'm just going to leave that for now. Since it's going to be not shared over the internet, technically speaking, it's going to be on its own little private network. I'm not too concerned about the password. If you are doing this over the internet and you're not going to be using a VPN and you're going to go direct port to port, I would recommend setting up a password that's a little more complex. Make sure that you're more than 12 characters because that's really the only thing protecting is your username and your password. And be sure to change the default username and password. Obviously, I also have a name of this device, which is not correct, which I'm gonna change in two seconds. And we're also going to now go over to the other server and do the rest of the setup. I connected to the VPN. I was able to connect over to the client's VPN, so we're all on the same network now. And what I'm gonna show you is that I'm remote desktop into the server, the old server. So the old server is called file server one. The new one is called file server two. Very simple naming. We're gonna basically sync the entire network data folders as well as all of the network shares. So to start with, there's a default folder that comes up, which is just labeled default folder. We're gonna remove this. We're just gonna edit. We're gonna remove this because we don't want the defaults. This computer name is obviously wrong. So we're gonna double check that. Device name, this should be file server two, because that's what I'm on right now, zero two. GUI password setup, connections. Make sure your computer names are all set up, everything's ready to go before you start working on the current server and you're gonna be sending it over. So hit save. Now it should say file server two, which is correct. Now we're gonna add a remote device, but what we're gonna to have to first do is we have to go over to the server. So I'm gonna pop into the server. This is on the remote desktop. I'm going to delete the default folder because I don't want to sync that. I'm going to double check to make sure I'm on file server one. It's not file server zero one. It's just a weird naming. We are changing it to zero two. Anyways, we're going to add a folder from here. So we're going to actually add all the client folders that we want to sync over. To start with, you want to make sure that you choose all the pads that you're going to be recording from. You'll also want to make sure to set up um, not to copy permissions unless you have a reason to copy permissions. In this case, we're, we're doing a file server, so I'm going to copy permissions and not ignore them. You know, if you do run into an error, you can turn off file permissions and you could just copy the whole thing over and then reset up the file permissions later after you replace the computer. Or if this is for just a backup, you can remove the file permissions just so that I can back up everything and sync over to the other server. That's a little easier for data, but it's not really good for security. You have to just kind to weigh that in your mind and see which one is better for you. If it's a production product, if you're doing this for production, it's going to remain in production and it's going to be syncing over constantly, then you'll want to set up permissions properly. You'll also want to set up a tiered permission so that sync thing has proper permissions to copy all folders and files and permissions at the same time. For my case, we're not keeping it as a, we're not actually keeping this syncing. So we're just going to use it for direct file copy. So that's why we can kind of ignore permissions just in case somebody set a permission in one of the folders that we didn't really want to set up and we don't want it to fail on that one folder. So right now I'm on the main server, which is the old server. I'm going to connect into that. I'm going to add the folder. I'm going to say which folder I want to share at this point. And in this case, I'm going to go to that folder. This is all going to be blurred out on your site, unfortunately, because this is the customer's data, but you would find the folder that you want to back up. And in this case, it's called server folder. This one I want to sync. So I'm going to copy that, paste it into the folder path, and then the label, you're just going to call it server folder. Folder ID, just leave it the way it is. Don't mess with that. Just, just don't change it. It should be fine. Go to sharing. I'm not going to share this right now. File versioning. We're not going to do any file versioning. I'm just going through all the little tabs to show exactly what's going on, but most of these you could pretty much ignore. You could add ignore patterns. This is if you want to ignore certain files for syncing, you can do that. On advanced, this is really most important. We're going to send these files to the new server. So it's going to be send only. 
if you put it in send and receive, that means the new server, which I have here locally, located here, will then take files back and forth. We don't want to do that. We only want to do a one-way sync right now. So we're going to say send only. Free space, 1%. Just leave this alone. Uh, I just check off ignore permissions for now, just so that we can get this synced up. Sync ownership, sync owner, send ownership. These are more advanced options. You don't really need to do them. You can read through them if you really want to go through that. Watch for changes. Yes, you want to make sure that's checked off because files are changing constantly over there at the current time, even during this sync operation. This computer is not going in for another few days. So even those updated changes, we'll leave it running and leave it connected so it can actually update and process as it goes. So let's go back to general for a second just to make sure I got everything we do. So we're going to hit save to that. We're going to let that scan. It's going to scan in the background for a very long time. I'm not going to wait for that right now. What we're going to do is we're going to now add a remote device off of the other previous system. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the ID from the system. So you click on actions, then show ID. It's going to come up with this crazy thing, but that's this entire long, crazy amount of lettering, numbering. You could also scan the QR code if you want to do that. I'm just going to copy it for now. So it's copied to the clipboard and I'm going to add this to this side. So I'm going to add a remote device. Now I'm back on file server 02, by the way. I should probably explain that. I'm on now on file server 02 because I just minimized my remote desktop and I'm going to add it to this local device here. This is file server 02. So I'm going to add a remote device. We're going to put the device ID in. The device name is going to be file server. I can't spell. File server 1 because it was labeled that way. We're going to, we're not going to share anything. We're just going to add the device. It will take a few seconds. Back on file server one, you have to approve the new device. You have to say, add the device. File server two. You're going to share the server folder with file server two. So you're going to check that off, go over to advanced. The device rate limit just means that if you have a very slow internet connection on either side, you'll want to set that. I'm not going to set that because both sides have a really good internet connection. We both have Verizon Fios here, so it's really fast. So we don't have to worry about that. We're going to hit save. And when we hit save, that's going to now approve that. So now when I go back over to the main server, it's going to ask you, hey, file server one wants to now share your server folder. Do you want to add it as a folder? You say, yes, let's add it. When it comes up, it's now gonna give you a folder path. That folder path is probably wrong. So what you're going to need to do is change that folder path to where you wanna actually store the data. And in this case, I wanna make a folder called server folder. And we're gonna save it directly here. So you're gonna copy paste that path, go to sharing. You don't need to really hit sharing on this at this point. Just click on file versioning, make sure it's on no file versioning. This is file versioning allows you to save multiple versions of the same file. So if somebody saves a file, it syncs over, it'll keep duplicate copies of that file for a certain amount of time. We're not doing that. We're just going, we're only doing a one way direct sync. So we shouldn't have to worry about that. We're not doing any patterns. Go to advanced. We're only going to receive only on this side. So we're going to select receive only. I leave it in the, the file pull order up to random, but you can set anything you want. You could do alphabetic, you could do small first, largest first, oldest first, newest first. They're kind of self-explanatory here. This is how, how the, when the file was created or if it was alphabetical or the size of the file. We're going to just do random because it uses the least amount of processing power. If you choose something like alphabetic, it will have to go th directly through the index in an alphabetical order. So that may take longer to process all the files. I recommend just leaving this random unless there's a reason to do certain files first. I'm gonna ignore permissions right now, but technically you should set up your own permissions. Now at this point, you're ready to hit save. Then you hit save, it starts to prepare to sync. You will see that it will take a very long time. Sometimes it's immediate, Sometimes it picks it up and starts syncing right away. Sometimes it takes a few minutes. Sync thing has gotten better if you're directly on the same network. If you're going through a firewall and you're going through not a VPN, but let's say you're going direct machine to machine through port forwarding, sometimes this takes a little longer for it to connect and figure it out. With VPN, it depends on your VPN speed. The VPNs that we set up, we set up pretty quick VPNs based off of you know OpenVPN, and we also use PFSense 
and we also directly link into it. But we also set up to make sure that we have fast enough internet on both sides to be able to do this. If you don't have fast internet, this is probably going to take a lot longer depending upon file size. And it depends also on the amount of speed on your internet. So if your internet speed is really horrible and you're transferring very large files, you will have a much slower, worse experience. But if you're just using this for a sync for a backup, you can do that. You can sync it to, let's say you're syncing your office computer to your home computer. You can do this pretty relatively easily without you know paying for any software. I opened this up in Windows as a temporary session for sync thing to run. It's running as a command prompt in the background. If you guys notice this lovely crazy thing opened up in the background, this is actually sync thing running. It's a console program. If you want it as a permanent loading operation, in other words, you want it to load every time the system starts, you'll want to load it as a service. I'm not going over that portion today. I'm only going over a temporary solution. So if you want more of a permanent solution, you'll want to run it as a service. This is more for a data transfer so that we don't have to do a data transfer when we're on location, we can already have all the data already synced. So this will prevent a lot of problems when we actually drop the machine off, take the other server down, put the new server in place, remap some drives, and you're all set to go. There's a lot more to sync thing, but this is a general setup. This is also bearing the fact that you know that your two systems are both on the same network. If they are not on the same network, this might be a little more complicated because you're gonna have to set up port forwarding. We're gonna have another video about port, forward, port forwarding and more complicated setups with sync thing, but this is kind of like an introduction to something that if you wanted to set up, let's say syncing of two servers that are on the same network, just as a backup, you can do that. Or if you want, you can also have it send and receive at the same time. That's it for sync thing uh, for now. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave any comments or suggestions in the, in the comments area. We do read them and uh, be sure to like and subscribe. We will have more videos coming up with sync thing as well as some other um, more interesting open source software. See you then.